Now that we know how to determine if triangles are congruent, we're actually going to go in and we're going to label that congruency, which creates a congruency statement. What that does is it tells us what piece or what corresponding parts of triangle A are congruent to triangle B. So let's dive in and take a look. So my first example here, I need to determine, are my triangles congruent? And since they share this side, we know that triangle A is congruent to triangle B by angle, side, angle. So I'm just going to put that here so we are aware. That's how we know that these triangles are congruent. Angle, side, angle. So I want to know, how is triangle A congruent to triangle B? So I'm going to label my first triangle. And I'm going to call it A, B, D. A, B, D. This triangle is congruent to triangle. If I'm going to start at A and go to B, then I'm going to start here at C and go to B. So this would be C, B, D. Triangle A, B, D is congruent to triangle C, B, D. Order is extremely important here. What this congruency statement is telling me is angle A is congruent to angle D. And wow, A is congruent to C. That's much better. Angle B is congruent to angle B, which we can see on our diagram up there. And angle D is congruent to angle D. These are both 90 degrees, so that would make sense. This is also telling me that side AB is congruent to side CB. AB to CB. Then I know BD is congruent to BD. That's how we knew that they were congruent, because we knew that this side was shared by both triangles. And then side DA is congruent to side DC. So if you remember, we talked about how we had to know the 12 pieces of information. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This congruency statement is telling me what corresponding parts are congruent in two congruent triangles. Cool? Okay. So we've got one more here. We've got to find a missing information because all we know is an angle and a side. So in this case, we have vertical angles again. So we know that these angles are congruent. They are vertical angles. So these triangles are congruent by angle, side, angle. And now I just have to write our congruency statement. Our congruency statements might be different, but as long as your order matches from your first to your second triangle, you're accurate. You're okay. So let's say I'm going to do triangle RST. It's congruent to triangle. If I'm starting at R, that means I have to start at U. So USQ. USQ. That is one way I can write this congruency statement. Like I said, order doesn't matter on the first one as long as it matches the second. So I could also say triangle S. T, R is congruent to triangle. So if I go S to T, I've got to go S to Q. So S, Q, U. That's telling me which pieces are congruent. Corresponding parts have to be in the same position. And our last order here, I could do, let's, well, it's not the last, but T, S, R. We got different options here. You're good. So T, S, R, that's going to be Q, S, U. All right. Again, just a visual so you understand that as long as your first triangle matches the order of your second triangle, you are good to go. My brain wanted to do something. Let me show you this real fast. If we talk about angle S in this diagram, we have an issue because angle S is technically four angles. So how would I talk about this specific angle here, this angle S? We actually label it using three letters, R to S to T. So this angle, I would call this angle R, S, T. That's how I'm creating 
that angle, all right? Then our upper angle, if we're talking about that upper S, it's created here. So this angle, I would call angle USQ or QSU, as long as S is that middle point. Okay, now that we know how to write our congruency statements, we're actually gonna talk about proving triangle congruencies and uh, doing that formally, proving some of our theorems using these facts. So enjoy, practice, and I'll see you in the next video.